Hey everyone, Mark from Coastal Country. Um, today's video, we're going to try and put some of the floor in this boat, or at least cut it out anyway. Got some plywood here and some marine carpet. So what we'll do is we'll get some templates made up, cut out some shapes, and then we'll get it primed and painted, and then we'll wrap it in cardboard and try and fit it. So yeah, um, if you like these videos, hit the like button, that'd be great. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe, and um, hope you enjoy. Easier to cut out. I went to buy some marine, marine ply, and a local hardware store has um, sold out on their promotional stuff. And the only other stuff they had was really thick, heavy um, hardwood type marine ply, which was um, it's just too heavy for what I'm trying to do. So this is just um, a non-structural ply, which is not ideal, but realistically, we're just going to seal it heaps with some good quality paint. Um, the boat's not out in the weather all the time, it's not like a ski boat where you're wet all the time. So um, yeah, this should last for years anyway, so we'll make sure it's sealed. That's the biggest secret with plywood to um, just get the moisture out and then we'll carpet it and we'll, we get five years out of it, that'd be awesome. So that's the plan and this is like, um, I think it was about 40 bucks a sheet compared to 170 or something for a real thick marine one, which is too thick anyway, I only wanted 12 mil, so should do the job anyway. So this is part of the original floor that came out um, in the center of the boat. Uh, it's not too bad. It's actually got, it is good quality hardwood marine ply, this stuff. Um, I would have liked to have bought this today, but they didn't have any and I don't have time to be mucking around. So anyway, it'll do the job. Um, we'll tidy this up a little bit. Um, this carpet's got the lines through it, but it is quite thin marine carpet anyway. So I've just bought plain gray and this isn't too bad. Really for it is a little bit of a hole there, but Plenty of life left in it yet anyway, so we'll give that a quick clean up and we'll reuse it I think. Alright, The second thought to that is super thin. Look at that. So we won't be using the carpet, but we'll use the board. So that's okay. We'll strip this off. Well, the top layer of this board's got a little bit of delamination, delaminating on I me, mean, happening. So we'll still be able to save it. Yeah, take them off. Get that out. So that top sheet's out, that next bit's okay, so we'll just take that bit off, recarpet it, or clean it up, probably seal that with paint, and a new carpet over the top, I think. Then, the more we dig, the worse it's looking. Check this out, this is the original carpet. Look how thin that is. See the light shining through it. So yeah, definitely, Time to change that stuff. I didn't think it was quite that bad, but anyway, I'll have to buy some more carpet. Just take that top layer of laminate off this fine, very thin plywood layer. So this is marine ply. Uh, so it just goes to show it hasn't been sealed. Um, that's what happens. So definitely once we'll clean this up, we'll give it a good sealer of paint and that'll help it a bit as well. Start needing a little bit of that layer of wood. Still quite solid though, so I'm not going to worry about it once it's carpeted. You never know. This is just a scraper that you can get. Uh, it's good for scraping down um, glue off cement floors when you're doing parquetry and things like that. It's just a four bladed um, scraper. You just turn it around, flip it over when you want to change the blade if it starts getting worn.
Right, so that's one side of the old floor cleaned up. It's actually come up not too bad. That's pretty solid now. Just had a couple of layers of laminate come off. Um, if it was any worse, I probably would replace it. But this side here is solid as, and that's the underneath part. So uh, seriously, if it's any, you know, if it starts getting signs of wear, I'll just replace it later. So I'm just trying not to go crazy with this boat and more of a knock around boat and a fishing boat. So it doesn't have to be super pretty. So this is the other side, it looks exactly the same. Nothing wrong with that. This side actually looks heaps better underneath, eh? So really once this is off, that's it. So that's good. The other one had a little bit more soft spots in it, but... Mm. We'll get that sealed up anyway. So... slide up under there. I'll give myself a bit of clearance in a minute. Just mark it first. So if I cut that out, that should slide up there, no worries. Cut out around there, give myself quite a bit of room to play with. Put a screw in here quickly to see if I can line it up to where it was. So that's the original hole there. Down the back here. That's all that done. Now this other board we're going to make is going to come across here, right across the face and cover all this section in. So that can be one of the next ones. We'll just do the longest one first. I think we'll do this back one. Right, so what I'd like to do is fill in this bottom section of this um, boat here. So once the floor's in, it's nothing worse when you're fishing and you, uh, pull a guardie or something over the side, jumps off the hook um, before you get in the esky, kicks the way underneath here and it works its way up under your fuel tanks and bits and pieces like that, so yeah, I want to seal this in. So what I've done is cut out a length of timber uh, lengthways across there, and that gets on top of those gussets there. And then what we're going to do is scribe out the shape of this hull to the bottom piece of this timber, so that'll make a bit of a funny triangle shape. That should sit straight in there. Before I do that, I need to... Um, what I did is add a quick measurement to cut this board quickly, made it 170mm, because I measured roughly that our old board sit gone around here somewhere and that's gone to the lowest point we've got to scribe from so I went 70 mil from there. But anyway, um, first thing we're gonna do jump the light board sit that up where it's gonna go like that and mark a line underneath. When it's open you don't want it to hit the um, hit the board So we've got a mark here, that's kind of where I need the top of this board to see it when it's fully done. Right, so we've measured a few marks here, we've got a centre line off the floor of the boat into here. We've got a, another mark off the floor of the boat up to where this board drops down a little bit and comes up. And then we've got a mark on here where the gusset sits. So that's given us a few reference points when I scribe this out later. You can put a block of wood on here if it's high enough in a pencil and actually drag the block along and it drops down and makes this shape but because it's so awkward 
I won't do it that way. <coughs> so what we'll do here, we know that this mark here is the bottom of our glove box, where it opens up. So all we're gonna do is measure from the bottom of the board. In this case, pretty much 140. And when I measure from the top down, describe 155, so that's 15 mil offset. So whatever I measure, I've got to add 15 mil to it. So, just pick a spot anywhere on the boat. So at this point here, the lowest point there, to the bottom of the boat, here is 150. So it's gonna be 165 down from the top. 165. Well, that's kind of fine. And this one here. So it's going to be pretty much 140 plus that 15 we're talking about, so 155 down. So down here is that way. And that's going to be our floor. So when you start sort of penciling it out, that's going to be the mark and then we'll slowly come up this way. So if we pick another spot off the boat here, put a horizontal line there so we've got a bit of a reference point. So that's going to be 140 as well there. So 155 down. Where our cut line is going to be. So we're now going from this point, heading up to this point, and that follows the contour of the hull. So next one, so we'll put a mark um, roughly in the middle here. So like there, there'll be a nut spot. We'll measure that down to a guesstimate on the hull. So now we're going to measure from that point up to the bottom of the board. Pretty riveting stuff. So that's 115. Plus 15, 5, 10, 15, that's 130. So now I measure 130 down from the top. And that's our next one. So basically what we do is follow the dotted lines. So you can put more and more measurements in if you wanted to, so that'll end up following the contour like that. Down to this line there. And essentially what you're doing is tracing out that angle there and then we'll put everything around it. So I'll show you the finished result of that because it's going to take a little while. So after all that, clear as mud. So we've just measured off reference points off the curve of the hull to where it steps up over boards, curve of this gusset here, and we've basically transposed it onto here. So that's going to be down to there, which is this piece. So all I'm doing now is play join the dots really. So we've got our reference marks. I've done in pencil there. The more marks you measure up from, the more accurate it'll be, but uh, I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to cover it in carpet, so we'll just do these straight ones first. And when I cut it out in the jigsaw, I'll get a bit, um, get a bit more curves happening. So that's that curved gusset. It actually goes to that one. So that one and it finishes off there. And it steps up here. So that'll be pretty close anyway. Right, I'll get that cut out. going to be. So that's sort of the gist of it. Chuck it in. See how bad the measuring is. Right. Oh yeah. Not too bad. So 
So that, that was pretty accurate. For some reason I had two lines here and I thought oh, I'll give myself a bit extra because there's a weld under there. It won't matter by the time the carpet's right around there. Won't matter at all. So anyway, so that'll be screwed in like that. So we need to take about five mil off each end because there's a weld, a seam weld running down the seat that's gonna hit. This in, see if it's gonna open. Oh, just missed it. In fact, it sits up there a bit. That'll be right. That'll stop them, get, stop them getting under there and kicking their way back. I've got to do the same with the front now. Same again. Or this one, or we're making a triangle bit, stop things sliding under there. Uh, this will have timber the top deck coming over probably probably overhang this this board that comes up here you know five mil maybe um, this lifts out that's going to lift out and that'll be like a funny t-shape and that means that that won't slide out by itself anyway first job to do same as i did the other one is move it from side to side we've got that rust uh, not rust that welding right so we'll go across there, so we got, what is that, 14.50. So we're really just making that big rectangle piece first. 14.50. And then we need to know the deepest part, the thickest, deepest part of that board. So it's not there because it drops down a little bit here. So it's gonna be that point there. So we've got awkward to measure. And we'll come right up to pretty much flush with this point here. So it's going to say, you might as well say 200, 205 if you want to get really technical. 205, well, there you go. Right, 205 and I've already. 205 by 1450, should do the job. Okay, so I was what I'm mucking around the other way. Um, this way is another way to describe the bottom. And it's a matter of just chucking a texture through a hole or something like we've done here. So this is our lowest point. So I just got to try and keep it as straight as I can. So it's a little bit rough but it's probably quicker and easier. Again, in the text to move. Mm. All right, will it fit? That is the million dollar question. Oh, oh, put this back on the ball now. Nice and flush there. A little bit of a gap there, and the carpet will be underneath it. And if a fish gets under there, I don't think we'll be keeping it anyway. So the carpet will be wrapped around there a bit, so you still can get um, things like swivels and sinkers dropping and rolling down under there, which means you've got to pull the floor out to get them out when you get home. But yeah, still good. You can still split, split things on there, no worries. So, all right, well, that one worked quite well. We'll get that screwed in later. We'll just start working on this front piece now. What I've done here at the front, I've just got a heap of cardboard as templates and just laid out sections all over the place to get all these funny angles uh, where the floor's gonna go. So you can cutting out little corners to make it sit in nice and tight later. And that's where the hatch is gonna go, that piece up the front here and down to there. So what we'll do now is put this cardboard onto the timber and scribe it out and we can cut that. So we had a piece of cardboard, I've thrown that on top of this bit of wood here and that's now our shape we've got to cut out. 
Um, what I have done is also just squared up the corners ever so slightly because uh, cardboard's never that accurate and I've squared up the hatch as well. Okay, so after a lot of mucking around with some cardboard templates, we cut out that piece, as you saw. Now it's time to see if it fits. Why is that sitting up? Oh, I think the actual floor's got a slight bow on it, so once that's locked down, that's not too bad. Alright, so it fits. fits pretty good. This bit here, go underneath that, and there's a little bit of an overhang there. Right, so now we know to now. Now, what we need to do is make uh, the hatch part and a little board that comes down the front there. A little piece that goes on this bit. Got to make the top of the seat and a little triangle over that side. Just get a couple of screws into this board while I measure up the next piece just so it doesn't move on me because I'm going to get pretty accurate. That is pretty much spot on at the moment. Just squaring up the channels with the hatch that we're going to make so that's kind of where it's got to go. So I'll put one in here just to pin it. Around there will work. There's a main beam running through there. Straight. I've got my other batteries on the drill hub, circular saw. So put one in the centre of that there. templates out here and cut out the rest. There's a hatch template made out of cardboard so that's the shape there. So that'll just drop in like that and I'll probably put this piece of timber side bit over the top of this uh, board later and we'll just lift it up a little bit so we've got a clearance so we can sort of slide it under and drop it in and that'll key that in a lot better as well. So we'll throw this in. Now I'll just cut that. Press it. Nice. Ooh, a little bit tight, is it? So if I shave, shave that off, that should be pretty close to that line. I'll just quickly take that off and then once I've done that then I'll trim this to the right length just to make sure nothing moves. I've got the circuit saw, just took a slither up here. Fits very nice. Cool, right. So that's good, put a pin down there. Looks pretty square. So now I can actually just measure this for the last time and trim this off. So a little 45 in the corner here, or rounded. So you don't get hooked on it, not that you probably will. Just, just cut out the next little template out of cardboard for here. Drops in there like that. So you might have to trim a little bit here and there, but um, yeah, doesn't fit too bad. So I'll go and cut that out of timber and chuck it in. 
I just fit this in again and I just noticed I had to take a tiny slither off there from that black line all the way down to pretty much nothing. So I just sort of quickly get the jointer out and we'll grind that, uh, plane that down. So all we've done is taken it from there down to a zero point here and when it's going through the joint or like that we're just pushing harder on one side with a bit where we need to take more material off and just feathering it where we don't. Another thing I've quickly done, probably a bit hard to see, every boat's going to be different but if you've got um, welds like this sticking up, which that's not the prettiest, um, what we can do is just mark them out. And on the back of where the board goes, I'll just get the flap disc and just take a little bit off here and there wherever I need to, like there's a little bit up the front there. And so when they drop it in, it's nice and flush onto the framework and not so much on sticking up on the welds. They'll bed in anyway after a bit of time, so but it doesn't hurt to do it now. So, so here's our little side bit on the seat. It'll be all carpeted as well. Giving that a little bit of wriggle room. Um, this is what I was talking about before. Um, this will actually stop this falling out, but I definitely need to make sure I can lift this um, seat out, which we probably can. So that slides under like that. The hatch can't, once we get carpet all around, it'll be pretty tight. Once, once we're underway, that can't slide backwards when we're travelling, and it also can't really lift up very easily with that holding it on there. So I've cut this top piece for the top of the seat. Uh, it is uh, 625 long, and I measured that from where I want the edge of the that end of the seat to finish, hard up against here, and then we've got to trim this or scribe this to suit around through here. So easiest thing to do, we know that it's gonna be pretty much the longest part's gonna be here somewhere. So I'll put a bit of a mark there. Grab your favorite bit of off cut, and what you do is you hold your pencil on the edge of there, on the block, and then you just drag along and that actually scribes the curvature of the boat as you go. So I'll just quickly do that. So you just gotta lock the pencil onto the wood part, the block of wood, and then let the back of it slide along. So like that, and as the block moves, you actually start making the line curving to what that angle of that boat is there. And this bit will just guesstimate because it's a bit awkward to get into. And then all I'll do here is sort of work out, this will slide back to say there. So I'll have to trim a bit out here in a minute. And there's another piece here, drops back, so I'll have to cut that out as well. Same with here, little piece there, and another piece there which you probably can't see. So we've got a five mil lip now all around on the underneath the edge of there. And if you can see that or not. Piece on the end where that board is. We've got like a five mil overhang on the top of that as well. I'll just round, probably round off these corners a little bit. So not too sharp. And that's pretty much it as far as all the timber stuff goes. Uh, we'll give it a very light sand on the edges and then we'll start painting it all. 
So that's all the timber work done um, in the front deck. So what I will do is pre-drill everything. Um, that means, because when you paint the boards, obviously um, that seals it. Then if you put them on and then drill them later, uh, you've just basically got fresh wood you've opened up water to get into. So I'll drill them all out. Then when you paint, some of the paint runs down the hole you've just drilled and you can find them easily enough later anyway. So that's pretty much what it's gonna look like. Um, quite solid. And not a bad little casting deck. You actually still feel like you're in the boat, not on top of it, especially at the sea if you get a little bit of a swell rolling in. So we'll get into this. I'll, I'll pre drill and screw all these on as well and uh, get them painted. So I think we'll leave it there for this video. Thanks for watching again. Um, and next episode, we'll be painting and doing some carpet probably. So I'll catch you on the next one.